Hi there, lovers of the tarot and beautiful seekers of spiritual truth around the world. We have a new moon reading today and there's four cards that I'm going to show you. These are the first three mm, juicy, lovely cards. Look at how wonderful they are. We've got the death card here. We've got the queen of swords, both reversed, sandwiching our lovely devil in the middle. Let's see if we can't decipher and call in a more beautiful message that might resonate for you today and in this this world right now and what's going on with all of its crazy madness and wonderful changes and transformation taking place. Now, first of all, let's look at this beautiful devil, this beautiful devil. And I say beautiful devil, not because we need to worship this energy or anything, but we, we need to make friends with this, this darker habitual nature inside of us in order to see it. He's standing here as the positive message because he's standing uh, straight up and down. So there's something positive about this message and the positivity is hopefully within our willingness to be naked and vulnerable under his stance and to recognize his greatest message which is how attached and addicted to old bloody stories am I? How addicted to my habits of making myself less than I actually am, bringing my energy down and, and holding my consciousness lower than the potential consciousness of seeing my, what he actually reflects is an angelic self. And he's a fallen angel with wings. And in this nature, um, he has come to tell us how we have also fallen and we also have wings. And, we, and if we're honest enough and if we're naked enough and vulnerable enough with ourselves, we can see that. He's sandwiched in between these two crazy cards of the, the Queen of Swords reversed and the Death reversed. And Death speaks about, oh, you know, sometimes I, I look at this card and I see this reverse death as, hey, whatever has, whatever has needed to die, it's already dead. It's dead already. It's gone. And maybe there's a parallel reality story that whatever we are resisting um, the death of and afraid of letting go of or surrendering or giving up in our lives right now has actually already gone. And I like this car when it's reversed in, in that way of looking at it because it just means that, hey, all you have to realize is that there's something that you've lost already and you think you haven't. There's something that you're, you're desperately grasping and holding on, to, on, holding on to, like scraping the barrel or just grasping at straws. And, and yet, in reality, it's already left you. The time for this, the, this holding on has gone already. And this death, you know, with the Queen of Swords reverse speaks a lot about the death of our ways of thinking, the death of our beliefs, the death of what we think, especially about ourselves. And the Queen of Swords is normally very clear about what is our truth. And yet when she's reversed like this, she often points towards truths that we are holding on to about ourselves that are fundamentally a lie, a lie to us. We don't call them a lie because they may be beliefs that are based on, upon stories way back when we were children, like I'm not good enough or I'm not good at this or, um, you know, that's not for me. This is ne not my story. I can't do that. All of these ideas, which are then backed up by many different experiences in life, which have showed us how true they are. So, hey, that's, a, that's not a lie I'm telling myself. That's a truth I'm telling myself. I'm genuinely not good at that. But this is where this is where this card is is a is a little bit dodgy and this is where our minds are a little bit delicate in nature and the queen can help us sort this out because she speaks about these truths as as being okay well that's one way to think about ourselves but it's not the only way to think about ourselves and i do this with my clients over and over again when i hear them say things that they go whoa whoa whoa, whoa hang on a minute that wind back a little bit that's not true. That's not real. You 
Um, it would really be beneficial for you not to tell yourself, and these are, this is when we're even expressing these truths out to the world, to not to tell yourself that, that reality. And sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at business. I'm not a businessman. Yeah, maybe you've never been taught or maybe you've never cared enough about it in order to practice some of the things that are necessary in order to do something well, in order to be good at something. That doesn't mean you're not good at it. It means you, I mean, to, to blank out that statement, oh, I can't do that or I'm not good at that. This is one way of looking at it. You can say, oh, but I've never given enough energy into that um, to to actually find out whether I can do it or not. I've never cared enough about that in order to make it a, a, a potential creative practice of mine or in, in order to find out whether it can work for me properly or not. And that's a much more honest way to frame the same truths that we may be looking at and justifying by a thousand experiences. So this queen speaks about these type of beliefs that we have about ourselves that might be holding us back and holding us in that devil energy of feeling less than we actually potentially can be. And so there's a potential that the devil wants us to actually realize, but his message isn't about potential. His message is about look at how changed you are to a lesser way of thinking and a lesser way of um, grounding your beliefs about yourself that hold you and help you feel trapped in that habit that you do every day that wastes your time over here and that thing that you do over there that you know gives you superficial satisfaction but in the bigger picture doesn't give you deep satisfaction. It doesn't lift you up and it doesn't actually inspire you or make you feel more connected to yourself. It's actually the manifestation of this lie, this belief, this old belief. And I say lie, lie is kind of a, it seems like a dark word, but let's just say a white lie, or just let's say a, a, a false truth. And it's a, a false truth because it, it seemed to have been true at one time in our lives, but it's actually fundamentally not our truth. Um, and these truths are, are maybe ready to to be dropped. And maybe the death of these truths is something that we can definitely focus on and bring into our lives as an extra practice, as a practice of doing something differently. We even tell ourselves things like, oh, I'm too old to change, or I'm not going to change now, or, you know, old dogs, you can't teach them new tricks. Well, actually you can, and I'm the living proof of that because I'm, you know, I, I'm learning things at 50 that I've that I never thought I would actually do. I'm doing things differently. I'm acting differently in my daily life. And I'm actually, you know, contemplating much bigger changes in my life that's going to shift all sorts of stories for me. And I've got these voices in the background. So this reading is wonderful for me. And it's just saying, yeah, but you're not good at that. Stop telling yourself that, Marcus, you idiot. You know, tell yourself a different story, actually, because you know, you know you can be good at whatever if you really want to. And I go, yeah, okay. Yes, actually I can. Maybe I just need to shift the way I'm talking to myself and allow those old beliefs to leave so that actually I can stand naked in front of the devil and go, oh my goodness, I've really been holding myself back all this time. I've really been stuck in a bunch of silly, silly habits that have been wasting a lot of my energy on, on, superficialities that don't give me any real satisfaction or silly little little stories that that might make me feel good ah a little bit but in the bigger picture don't touch my heart and now we come to the the, the fourth card and this is a kind of an it was a funny little enigma card and check out this because another major arcana three major arcana cards and and one court card in this uh, new moon reading, which is quite powerful, I would say. And this card came up sideways. And I was looking at it with my friend and we were saying, you yeah, know, what's this card sideways? And normally when a card comes out sideways, I'll spin it because my cards have a little bow on them. So they spin lovely and I'll spin it round and then it'll come up either reversed 
or, or the right way around. I span it twice, it came up on its side and, and I was looking at this with a friend and we said, oh, maybe this is the, maybe it's a card that we won't even see. We won't even see whether it's the right way up or the upside down. Maybe this is just some, some part of us that's just relaxing and it is quite lazy. And this friend of mine pointed out a quality of, of the fool, which, which I really relate to, which is like, oh yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll jump off that cliff into the abyss of new unknown territory. I'll do it another day. Why? Because I know it'll be all right. Why? I've got the faith of the fool. I've got the faith of the, of the, of the sun behind me. I know I can do something, but we'll do it tomorrow. And that tomorrow turns into next year, which turns into next decade. And before you know it, changes that you would really enjoy and benefit from, leaps of faith, jumps into the future, which are fundamentally part of our path on a, on a moment to moment level, are, are never taken. And we never even see that the opportunity is there for us to take. Or we've become complacent about an opportunity that's there, and yet we haven't dared die to those old beliefs, recognize how trapped we are in, in some addictive habits and behaviors, and really reconfigure the way we think about ourselves. So let's do that. Let's do all of those things. <laughs> let's, let's catch ourselves being uh, mentally negative towards our own selves towards ourselves as far as who we can be and what, what we can be and what we can do and, and our capabilities of that. Let's catch ourselves every time we tell ourselves, oh, I can't do that. I'm not good enough on that front. Oh, I, oof, I'm terrible at that. Oh, me, that? Oh, <laughs> it's like chalk and cheese and it won't work. I can never do that. Catch yourself and tell yourself, no, well, that's not actually true. You can do all of these things and you can. And I was working with a, with a, with a friend the other day and and amazed at how many new things um, I was, I've been coaching her to do it as far as changing the habits. She goes, I can't believe I can do all of this at, you know, at, a, at a later age in life. So there's no such thing as, as old dogs and new tricks. We can definitely be open to change. We can definitely res take away any stubbornness we have or, or recognize that the addictions that we might have don't really benefit or don't really uplift us and inspire us in life. We can recognize that, hey, death isn't such a bad thing. The, the death of these type of thoughts and beliefs and ways of thinking and talking about ourselves to ourselves and to the world on the other is just becoming an obstacle for any new release, any new beginnings that life desperately wants us to take and make in our lives. Have a fantastic new moon, guys. I'd love to hear your comments and I wish you all the best.